<laughs> work out on your path, work on it. Any questions about it, about this uh, teaching? I, I guess you, might, you must have learned this before, right? You must have. But today, the speciality is that I said, different, defi now a lot of people they say, defilements can be overcome in one of the ways. That is not what the sutta says. So that is, some defilements can be overcome in this particular way. Some defilements can be overcome in this particular way. That means we have to know these seven because these seven can come at different times. Let's say now, uh, now you are able to practice the first one, dasana, because you are here in the retreat, so you are so uh, okay, ready to understand dhamma. Maybe later today. If I'm not mistaken, if something happens to you, let's say uh, something happens to you in your household, maybe on the way, maybe somewhere else, then the rest of the events will start kicking. The rest of the events are related to the other five or six techniques. So they are situational, event-based uh, things. That is how you're going to find the technique. All right, any questions? Do we have a mic over here? Mic for them. to them. We have two volunteers, so if you raise your hand, they will bring the mic over to you. So don't worry. Any Dhamma questions about today's, uh, this afternoon talk? Okay, till you come up with a question, I will uh, be going to answer these questions. Dear Bhante Sukhi, Ho Sukhi Hontu, seeing Bhante advice for continuous practice and keep on progress in meditation for a beginner. It est. I think you're asking which one is better, daily practice, monthly practice, or yearly practice. Probably that's the question, right? Well, I mean, yeah, daily practice. Daily practice will become, become a weekly, monthly practice, and yearly practice. Dhamma practice is not only a retreat, not only an event. It is a personal practice. So you do your things at home, wherever, whatever you do with. So it's a continuous practice that keeps flowing all the time. If you stop practicing all of a sudden, what will happen is that you will expire in your Dhamma practice. That is when you feed a lot of Dhamma into your mind, but they would not come to the heart. Right? They go to all these things, but only they nourish this place. None of them come here, go down. The real practice is here. Heart. All right. All right. Vansi, how do we know we achieve jhana? I mean, how do we identify? We always heard of bliss, joy, peace, but any sign to know this. For that, you need to associate a teacher. That is how you know. Otherwise, you will end up with uh, what you call abhasas, fallacies. Uh, you're talking about Samatha Bhavana here, I think. Samatha Bhavana. Uh, in the Samatha Bhavana, you need to associate a teacher. Actually, the Buddha said, practice the Noble Eightfold Path. 
that itself will take you to Nibbana at a certain point. But Samatha, if you go, if you want to make a choice, if you go to Samatha, definitely you should associate a teacher for that. Then that person will listen to you, know your progress, and will tell you what it is like. Otherwise, we can't understand that properly. Unless you attain Nibbana. Yes, then you know, self-understanding about it. Right? A few more questions. Oh, three questions in one row. <laughs> Must we experience all the 12 steps? 12 steps? Or oh, 16 steps? 16, I think. You mean the morning one, right? Yeah. 4, 8, 12, 16. Uh, well, I mean, as much as we can, we should be able to experience them. When breathing becomes subtle, it, it is hard to observe. So thinking arises what to do. When breathing becomes subtle, we don't need to observe the breathing again. What are we going to observe at that point? What are we going to observe at that point? When, be when breathing becomes refined, so subtle, then your emotions are going to be seen by you. After that, we are not looking at the breath. Breath for what? We are going to look at the breath. Breath, we are looking at the breath as a gateway to see our emotions. Breath is, breath is a, a helpful object that will take us to the real emotional structure. That is how the breath is connected to the kusala kusala structures. Once your breath becomes subtle, then you, you get to see how I create my kusala, why I don't have akusalas. So, there is nothing to do after that. Will taking precepts a day before retreat help? Why eight precepts? Well, uh, precepts, uh, and there are two things to understand here. What are they? Sila and Sikka. There are two Pali words, right? Sila and Sikka. Sila means? Ah, what is Sila? Let's talk from there. Now this person asks, last question, as a last question, will taking precepts a day before retreat help? Why eight precepts? So we have to talk about Sila to answer this question. What is Sila? S long I L A. Either you should be very ignorant or you know everything. <laughs> what is Sila? A very fundamental question. Somebody can take the mic and uh, explain to me. Raise your hand. They will bring the mic. What if... Ah, there is somebody over there. Yeah, very bold person. Sila means virtue to her. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we go for a little bit, little bit of an explanation of what does Sila mean? For example, a baby doesn't have Sila. Ah, you, quoting the morning example, huh? <laughs> okay. Sila does not mean the simple avoidance, simple refraining from the bad thing. It is not Sila. Okay, good, good. Not having food after midday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
yeah it's very much very much not too much sealer you don't need too much sealer to practice meditation don't do too much sealer if you do it you will never be able to become a sotapanna why there's a feta called silabbata paramasa which arises from bad sealer it starts from bad sealer the sealer has good kusala sealer akusala sealer so if you if you are too much on to sealer that means you are you, you sound like you have ended up in sealer it's a it's a process sealer samadhi then panya you know so uh, but we need sealer some level of sealer Actually, the question was um, for those who are not familiar with the precepts and how it helps when we do meditation. Okay. So I always said that they have intention. Good. Uh, the difference is I notice there are additional three. So is that something that is standard for the retreat? Yeah, a good question. Why we take additional three precepts? actually they are not making a lot of big differences changes as you can see not dancing not listen uh, not listening to music uh, and not uh, eating after midday uh, not uh, sitting on high end luxurious things i think they were given at the time of the buddha in a way you can minimize any tendency to akusala that is why they made it but normally when you ask me is seal a mandatory for meditation yes the first five first five are mandatory because even a non buddhist can practice that seal because in everywhere in the world killing is illegal stealing is illegal in any country misbehaving is illegal lying is illegal getting intoxicated is illegal anywhere in the world maybe there are slight changes by decree so that five precepts uh, can be practiced by even anybody you don't have to be a buddhist so it's mandatory okay seela see you cannot say seela as simply morality ethics virtue seela means calming your uh, body and speech that is seela can the seela calm your mind no as a consequence of the calming of the body and speech then you are able to go to the mind so what is seela after today what does seela mean calming your body and speech can seela calm your mind not directly but as a consequence of it. in order to calm the mind you have to practice right mindfulness but that earlier process helps you to do that then sikkha s i k k h long a sikkha sikkha are specific training rules for lay people or monks nuns that's a different thing so sikkhas are under seal so the question will taking precepts a day before retreat help why do you take pre- precept just before that day you are supposed to keep your precept all the time why is it only yesterday you have to take it that's such a very planned game huh? <laughs> tomorrow i'm going to be good tomorrow only and then tomorrow not then right seela is not just to show other people not to show to just to a retreat it's for you it's for you you cleanse yourself you purify yourself at least five precepts at least if you cannot take other things if you cannot take other three definitely because you have to eat other things it's okay other th- other three uh, precepts are not very massive precepts for uh, lay people this too so i would say continue your practice of seela as much as you could right so that is why i always say not people come and take precepts in the temple i say you renewed your precept today if they take precept mean they broke it right they broke it before come so try to give the notion perception that you been keeping them uh, continuing renewing your precept that means you have to have seela as a continued practice it's good but don't try to practice too much unnecessary seela 
that's irrelevant that will take you to a different bad person after that right remember what happened uh, there was a man at the time of buddha who behaved like a dog eat as a dog talk as a dog barking and then go like a dog it was a practice at that time when you behave like a dog you can be reborn in a heaven then one person who noticed this particular person who acts like a dog then he brought this to the buddha the, the story then he asked bante this person that particular person is acting like a dog uh, wanting to become uh, in the particular heaven maybe uh, liberation too will that happen then the buddha said if you act like a certain animal you will become that same animal after you die interesting right yes because your thoughts are like that particular animal that's why i tell pet lovers whenever you want to think about something think about humans all the time i mean you respect take care of animals have a lot of compassion but your mind when you die you should have about the humans otherwise you think about a pet you die where will you be heading to you are, you are heading to a place that i don't want to say that <laughs> that's really uh, sad and very uh, you know unfortunate think about human you may not be able to trust lot of humans because of your behavior your way maybe your thinking patterns maybe other people are not good to you but the moment you pass away if you think about a good human maybe your good human activities to other humans that's the key and then someone acted like a cow this is given in the sutta kukkura vatiya sutta kukkura vatiya sutta in the majjhimika then the another person told the buddha bante that person acted like a cow uh, eat like a cow and ruminate ruminate after eating not giving lot of pain thinking that past bad karmas are going to be finished acting like a dog actually the the reason why those people acted like animals they thought when you act like an animal you are uh paying off all the bad karmas in the past when you act like a that kind of animal that was the fundamental motive behind that then the buddha said yes same thing this person will become a cow because he or she acting as a cow if you want to become a human practice dasa kusala uh practice metta to humans a lot also animals everybody but be with humans because we became humans because we respected other humans if you don't do that if you don't like that then your mind might be mounted upon something else so answer to that question is uh seela is a continuous practice practice all the time as a renewed practice all the time uh that would be the answer so whenever you go for a retreat you don't mind about it so because you already have seen the last question if one experiences minor discomfort during meditation would you advise be oh i was given multiple answers <laughs> adjust posture until minor discomfort passes oh continue meditating in same posture until minor discomfort passes on a adjust your posture there is a sutta in the i think in the majjhimanikaya vanguttara nikaya anatha pindiko vada sutta with that we're going to take the break after in this sutta anatha pindika who is that who is anatha pindika the person who donated this big temple jetavanaram he was going through his last moments then he sent a message to the buddha i want to see arhan sariput not the buddha don't know why because he had all the friendship with the shakmuni buddha then arhan sariputra he went to his house then arhan sariputra started giving a dhamma talk about uh, certain penetrative teachings anicca and all that at the end of the dhamma talk anathapindika told him bhante i know the buddha for many years 
over probably 20, 30 years, I offered all these things. I know all the other senior arahants, but I never heard this thing from anybody. I'm so happy. Then at that time he said, but now I have lots of pain. I'm struggling with my pain. Then Arhan Shariputra says, think that your pain is also impermanent. Your pain, bodily pain, maybe tummy pain or whatever the pain, think that it is also anich. Right? And then uh, he passed away. After a while, he passed away while Arhan Shariputra was there. Now, this was a question asked by somebody to me, Bhante, can we think the same way while we are dying? Somebody asked me a question because I think that person uh, went for a sutta class or something and then the person, I don't know who is monastic or somebody, did not explain that part very much. But that person told them, this is how you all should die one day. Whenever the pain arises, think pain also on it. I said, no. This is a wrong idea because this was given to Anatha Pindika. He was already a certain, uh, uh, I would say, pala person. That means who has already attained certain uh, spiritual attainments. For that person, it is easy. It's good. It's, it's a customized teaching. It's customized only for the Anatha Pindika, not for us. That is why you should not read suttas without a proper guru. Never do that. You will end up with lots of troubles, difficulties. Better not to read them. Because you will pick on certain things. But understand, these teachings were given specifically for specific people. So I would say to this question, adjust your posture uh, until minor discomfort. Because you can uh, switch to different postures. There's no worry. You can do it. But if you talk about monastics, maybe someone who is almost going to attain Nibbana by practicing both jangas, they may have to look at it differently. They will look at it differently. They will look at that pain as anicca. Otherwise, for normal people, we always say, uh, always practice uh, what you call right mindfulness so that uh, everything else will be okay. When the pain arises, you are not attaching to the pain, but you are trying to think about all the good things you have done in your life. That is better than trying to think about the pain. Because when you think about the pain, you are not able to get it. Because at the time of someone's death, their physicality, mentality are very vulnerable. They are not able to practice Dhamma at that point. They are weakened. If you look at Abhidhamma, when somebody is going to die, even the intensification of karma is low, very low, javanas. That means uh, better to think about the good stuff you have been doing rather than going to specify one particular thing with anicca because that might be a very hard task for you. Let's say we have pain, you're trying to think about pain as anicca, but you are not able to do it. You have not lots of physical, mental courage to do it. But if you're going to think about, oh, I have done lots of good karmas, I have given dana, I have done this and that, that can sort of help you a lot, easily. I mean, for the normal people, I'm sorry. All right, any other questions about today? Today's Dhamma talk? Uh, the mic, please. What you just said, or oh, I don't know whether I heard it correctly, that it's not good to do too much sila. Hmm. How do we know it is too much sila? That is the question. Right? How do we know that we are doing too much sila? That means it is not too much sila. In a way, it is an extreme way of practicing sila. That is how we have to take it. Uh, let's take panatipata. Very easy to understand. What is Panatipata according to the Buddha? How did he ask us to practice Panatipata? 
uh, not killing how did he say very interesting question now we know the first precept is not killing any being is panatipata veramani how did he ask us to practice it he said it is the intention volition that will uh, break the first precept there but what about the other religious people at that time they said it is everything right the jain stole they said that nigantas even you cannot drink water from rivers water replaces because if you draw water from a river or stream you have to boil it first and then drink it at that time they didn't know while you boiling you are killing <laughs> tiny beings creatures they didn't know that they said every time you uh, draw water from there you have to do it when you walk you have to sweep the floor before you walking this is extreme unless we know there are lots of animals over here we will do it but can we do all the time it's not practical unless we know there are animals and tiny is we going to sweep it definitely why not so that is not extreme see that but the buddha says no it is the intent if you know that you are stepping on them yes that's very bad but if you don't know that's okay what about the job of somebody who is doing a pest control in buddhism a good example what is the pest control like there are many people who are involved in pest control i think some of you may have got even the services from them <laughs> at certain point what is pest control for some reason some uh, rats have come into your house cockroaches have come into your kitchen now what do you do there are thousands of cockroaches in your kitchen what are you going to do now are you going to take one by one i'm not going to kill them <laughs> tell me the truth take take a small thing a uh, one cockroach go on second go on. <laughs> now they are they are breeding thousands and thousands every night because they are breeding is so fast what are you going to do definitely you're going to call pest control at that point why because human life is the priority at that point we're not angry about it we have to do something about it even that person is doing that to protect us even it is said even a judge cannot sentence somebody to death with malicious thoughts in the jurisprudence let's say there is somebody who is supposed to be sentenced judge cannot do just to okay with so much anger just his job let's take a soldier who is protecting the borders of a country there are human smugglers drug traffickers drug cartels they are going to stop them maybe they have to use extra force why is it to protect the country their intention is protect the country if not how can you peacefully live inside the country we have to look at it that way so buddhist sila is not extreme we look at it differently we we see it differently if if then uh, the killing have to be understood according to different con but we are trying uh, as much as we can to stop killing the buddha said i am not concerned about the death did was he concerned no he was not but i am concerned about killing but this killing thing has to be understood based on the situation so if you are not understanding that that is going to be an extreme sale now the example you are going on a highway and there's an animal trying to come to the highway a big animal maybe now you want to save the animal but lots of cars are coming behind you at the same speed maybe more than you what should what should you do by law you are not supposed to stop for the animal why is it you should not jeopardize the fellow drivers just because of the animal why is it this is the truth so we have to practice dhamma according to the real life situation not like whatever you see here only right 
So our intention is to protect everybody as much as we could. We have to protect everybody as much as we could. Sometimes we are not able to do it. But our intention is good. So that is extreme sealer. So when somebody is into extreme sealer, they will not practice samadhi because they get stuck in the samadhi. So the journey is stopped at the sealer level. No panya at all. All right, any more questions? Yeah. Hi, Bante. Yes. In terms of the intentions to kill, right, how about uh, hunting and fishing? Is there any intentions to kill? In t uh, hunting and hunting killing. Hunting and fishing. Yeah, good question. That has to be looked at differently. Now, let's take hunting. Now, hunting is right according to the law in some countries, but it's not right according to the wholesome thought. So hunting is a sort of, uh, I think, if you, if you ask me what kind of hunting, is it, for, is it for fun or is it for, as a job? At that time, there were hunters. Buddha never said hunting is bad, but he said killing is bad. So that person has to think about what to do. Try to avoid such things. So uh, definitely it's unwholesome. But there are, if we're going to keep talking one by one, <laughs> uh, there are lots of things we can talk about. Somebody might say, now fishing happens through a lot of modern techniques, right? People don't go and then catch the fish. They have GPS monitored uh, stuff. So I would say we can make choices. We, don't, we might not correct the society. Personally, Dhamma journey is not the people's journey. Dhamma journey is not the people's jobs. Dhamma journey is my personal journey. So I can make a choice about this. Uh, because the Buddha says volition, uh, chetana is the fundamental thing, we can make lots of choices to avoid uh, bad karma. This is why you, this is why this is why you should have picked up a local temple. I mean local temple, Malaysian. Yes, Malaysian temple, yeah. It's outside the entrance, a lot of ants. They just want yes, to yes. get rid because we some is coming you see, to clean right. the temple. So, yeah. I yeah, I cannot criticize any Sangha, because that's not my duty, but I can say is that uh, uh, Different temples carry different rules and they are, maybe they are not Vinaya, maybe they are their own constructed, their ways of looking at it. So when it comes to cleaning some culture, even though it's in Malaysia, but the Thai monks are the ones who are running the temple, they may have their own ways. So I think that was a very fortuitous, very random thing that you experienced, right? I think you, you never expected this could happen. Yeah, yeah, so very fortuitous. So I would say, yeah, 
it happened. So <laughs> now you are going to look at it uh, from a way that you would not do it again. You regret about it, but now uh, you are trying to intensify your practice that I will not do that again. I will not engage in even in such uh, programs too, because especially in such places, according to you, mm, that, that could be the thing. Otherwise, now it happened. It happened already. So, yeah. You are much better. Some people have even killed many bigger beings so in this society. So, uh, looking at them, so, yeah. So, I mean, do not regret too much. Uh, regret is, is a necessary thing to understand what you did. But now, do more good things. Uh, do more good things. Do more good things that will be really helpful for you. I will take one more question and we'll go to the break after that. Ah, yes. Thank you for all the teachings and the guidance. Yes. One question. Uh, you s seem to be giving the lay people a lot of slack. In the same sense, I think, you said unless you are the monastic, you should be practicing very hard. Because for monastic people are supposed to be practicing to be hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but for lay people, what should be the, what should be the realistic goal? What should be the goal of the lay people in, in, in practicing? Okay. It depends. It depends. Now, Buddha never said every lay person should be an arahant. Remember what he told Vyagapajya? Vyagapajya came to, this is one of the suttas in the Anguttaranika. He said, Bhante, I am not looking for very deep teachings. He said directly, we are living a very luxurious life. We are wearing all the garlands. Uh, we are having lots of gold, silver. I want to know how to be a better human in this life and after. Then the Buddha said, four things for this life to become a better person, four things for the next life. But four things for the next life should also be done in this life. So you, can't, you can't guarantee what will happen to you after. He said, Uttana Sampada, Arakka Sampada, Kalyana Mittata, Samajivikata are the ones to become a better person. Uttana Sampada means lay people should be, shouldn't be lazy people. They should be energetic people. They have to practice virya in the good way. Arakka Sampada means they have to create protection. Uh, Person-wise, house-wise, life-wise protection. Then Kalyana Mittata, they should be surrounded by Kalyana Mittas all the time because they have a very busy life. Highly uh, able, I mean, high, high chances of being with the wrong people. Finally, Samajivi Kata, they should be able to uh, break, break even the expenses and income, right? If you don't break even your expenses and income, you will be in trouble. These four things for this life. And then for the next life, Sadha, practice of uh, trust about the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Then seal and become a morally good person, at least five precepts, that's enough at this point. Practice chaga, generosity, and practice panya. What does it mean? That means Buddha says, initially, every lay person needs to become a better human. Now, there are human, uh, lay people who don't want to become humans, they want to become an araha. Is it going to be possible? Because Nibbana is the provision of becoming a better person. If you are not a good, if you are not thinking about others, if you are not compassionate, if you don't have metta towards others, if you don't have mudita, how come you going to practice something to Nibbana? So I think this is the same path. If you are more serious, you can become a better person and you can plan for that. So a lay person's life is not taken as only having one objective. Monastics, yes. That is yes. That is the Nibbana. I think that impression has gone into the lay people too now because of uh, the direction issue. Lay people have choices. Become a better person oh, and uh, attain at least Sotapan. Make sense? 
Okay. So there are choices. So if somebody is saying that lay people should attain Nibbana, that is not what the Buddha said. That is a misinterpretation of the Buddha's teachings. If they wish, they could. But the Buddha says, Sansara is a danger. It is a risk to uh, go in the Sansara. If you would like, then you can go ahead. All right, so I think let's go for the break now. That means we're gonna take a break uh, for uh, 15 minutes and then we are going to come back here for the uh, meditation, sitting meditation, final part of the meditation. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do a small pre uh, reflection after this Dhamma talk uh, before we disperse for the break. Akasatha chabumatha diva naga mahitika punyantang anamu ditwa chirang rakhang tuluk sasanang chirang rakhang tudi sanang chirang rakhang tumang paranti sadhu sadhu. Now we are taking the break. 15 minutes. <laughs> 